Welcome to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Cheyenne Bearson, and today we have Summer Sawaya on with us. We're going to be discussing her recent trip, fly fishing the Crystal Coast. Summer, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm so excited to be back. Good. I'm so excited to hear about your trip. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Summer Sawaya, as Cheyenne knows, because she's an incredible diver and spearfisher as well. That's kind of the world that I'm in. Um, I do fish a little bit, so this trip was a little bit different for me. It was more fishing, fly fishing, um, you know, out of the water activities, but it was incredible and I learned a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't got the chance to dive with you, but just know of you through the diving community. I know, we're finally we're like meeting, kind of. <laughs> I know, I know, it's great. I'm glad we're getting to catch up on here. I know. So, what have you been up to lately? Not a whole lot. Just like kind of traveling a little bit. I just went to Costa Rica, which is great. I didn't get the chance to dive. We did go fishing. We didn't catch a single fish. No. <laughs> I know. But just work, real estate, you know, same old stuff. And then the trip with Salt Life. So you guys were fishing in Beaufort, North Carolina, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, before we get into the details of the trip, can you give us an intro to fly fishing for our listeners who might not know a whole lot about it? Yes, yeah, so fly fishing is just a different technique compared to like spin fishing, which normal people are like used to. Fly fishing, it's a lighter rod. It's more of like a natural motion. It's a very different technique and it, it's a little difficult. It takes some time and some practice and some patience to get used to it, but once you get the hang of it, it's amazing. It's just a lot more natural. You're basically using a fly and you want it to touch the top of the surface of the water naturally so fish can kind of bust on it. You know, you're not using your lures and your heavy mono and it's just a lot different. <laughs> was it your first time? It was my second time, but the first time I did it was very like, you know, I was just with friends, we're just messing around, so I didn't really get the technique. So it was kind of my first time and patience is needed <laughs> was your first time in freshwater or salt water salt water oh that's nice i yeah. find from my experience because i like to fly fish i'm definitely not great at it but it is a lot of fun it's much easier salt water for me because there's less stuff to snag yes exactly exactly i feel like in freshwater it would be a lot more difficult just you know and after doing it twice and knowing the motion it's 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 a lot <laughs> Well, it sounds like a super fun trip. You got you went with Team Salt Life, Beaufort, North Carolina, fishing, let me make sure I get this correctly, in the Crystal Coast. Yeah, yeah. We were, uh, if anyone's familiar with the area, Outer Banks, we were right off of Shackleford Banks, which is this beautiful island with wild horses. Um, just the scenery was amazing. We were close to Cape Lookout. It was incredible to kind of explore the Outer Banks with the Salt Life team and other than fly fishing, we did a ton of activities. So fly fishing was my favorite, but it was an amazing trip. That sounds incredible. Wild horses. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Incredible. Did did you see them while you were fly fishing? We did. So we it's it's amazing because you're fishing like right right off the bank, right there. Um, and you just see the wild horses run. So we were like, please take us over there. And we got off and, <laughs> and we got to kind of we didn't want to scare them, but we walked up and they were right over the bank and it was just like storybook majestic incredible and they're just beautiful i love how whenever uh from my experience going with team salt life there's always something in the trip that's not necessarily salty related but they're always willing to go explore and investigate just for that extra layer of experience on the trips so they're really cool about that i know we because the captain was like listen this is shack over banks there's wild horses you might not see them but if we do um, you know, we'll take you up and we'll look. And as soon as we saw them, I think we were like in the middle of casting and fishing and we were like, go, go, go. We have to see them. So we did. And it was incredible. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Oh, it's amazing. How did the day, did you guys fish one day or two days fly fishing? We were supposed to do, I think two days, but it ended up just being one kind of weather dependent. Um, so we went out in an afternoon, fished until sunset. It was amazing. We were going for Albacore tuna, which is like, it's on people's like top three bucket list if they're going to fly fish, like coolest experience ever. Wow. Okay. So I've seen Albacore tuna like in the grocery store, in photos, but never actually seen them in the wild. What are they? Did you guys catch one? 
We did. We caught a few. So they're a kind of like any other tuna on how they act. Like they'll kind of school up and they chase the bait to the surface so they can kind of attack and, and crash the bait. But it's, it's just so cool to see an albacore. I had never seen one before. You know, we're used to black fins or on the occasional yellow fin, blue fins, but these tunas, they're small. So you're not looking for like a big tuna. They're small, but they fight so hard. Like once you're hooked up to one, they fight like a big tuna and you're, and you're on the fly rod, which is lighter and a lot more difficult. So it was, it was an experience. Oh my goodness. What was the biggest one you guys caught size wise? Do you know? Probably like 11 pounds. I don't know size wise exactly, but I'm assuming like maybe 11 to 13 pounds. They weren't huge, but they were, they fought hard. That sounds like a heck of a fight on the fly rod. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm -hmm. What, what kind of setup were you guys using? I know there's different weights and sizes. Do you know how big your rod and reel setup were? I don't know exactly. The captain kind of like hooked us up and was explaining things and he had it like dialed in. Like he was a pro um, and he was just showing us the technique and explaining the rod and like it really, there's so many steps to it and it's just so much different than the rod and reel and like you almost want to, because there is a reel, you almost want to like go back and fall back on that technique, but you're like, wait, I have to pull the line. I have, like it's, it was a lot. It was a lot to learn in one, but once you get it, it's like, it's just all a technique. It's like dancing. Well, <laughs> what would you say the advantages of using the fly rod were for this specific fishing trip? So for this one, Elbies, because they were so schooled up, I think if we just like cast a lure, yeah, we probably would have caught them, but with the fly, it's just such a natural movement. And I think with such a light, cause you're using like a fly instead of like a big lure, um, with such a natural movement and such like a natural placement of the fly on the surface of the water, I think it was just easier for them to kind of like bust on that because they were already busting like crazy on the bait versus like dropping in like a big heavy, you know, lure in there and kind of either scaring them or whatever it would do. But it was like the perfect, the perfect way to do it. So for fly fishing, I know that most anglers like to match the hatch as they call it. Do you know what kind of bait was running that they were blowing up on? Or did you use a similar fly to the bait that was in the area? So we tried a couple different baits. Um, we used just like a traditional fly and then he was getting funky with it and he kept pulling out these like Albi snacks. <laughs> That's what he was calling them. I don't know what they were, but um, it was kind of like an artificial fly and one was pink, one was green. Um, and whatever one would like, the pink one ha happened to be the one that they, they went after the most, but I have no idea why. But apparently these Albi snacks were like, the perfect bait for the tunas at the time. Like his own little secret stash of yeah, flies. Yeah, it really was. Like he would pull them out and because it, it's crazy over there um, because you see the fish busting and there's probably like five or six other boats also doing the same thing on fly. So you're like, you see the fish bust and then you run out and all of the other boats are coming at the exact same time and casting into the same school. And we just happen to keep getting the bites on the pink, the pink little Albi snack. So he was like, this must be the, the golden one, the golden one, like this is the best. <laughs> and he was on the radio like, guys, it's the Albi snacks. And he actually like gave a couple to some other boats. It was, it was really funny. Oh, that's really nice. I was, was about to was say, so nice. I know like when I'm on the boat and I see other people catching fish that like I can't catch and it's going on right around me, like the suspense and frustration gets so real. So that was so nice of him to share his secret weapon. I know. Cause yeah, same thing. You're like, okay, what is that boat doing that I'm not doing? Like what's going on? So it was, it was really nice of him. What was the rush like with having all those fish blowing up around you, the other boats honing in and the pressure of getting the fly in the right spot? What was that like? Oh, it's crazy. It's, it, it's like comparable to like Wahoo diving. When you see a school of Wahoo come in, you're like, Oh my God, I have one chance. Uh, it's almost the same thing because you see the school of Albies busting and then you run over there with the boat and like as you're running you have to like start doing the fly and getting it going and like making sure your technique is right and then as soon as you pull up you have to make sure that fly lands like right in the middle of you know the action and if it doesn't it's like 
they're either probably going to go down or move to a different spot. So it was a lot of pressure and you're having to like hold on to the fly rod and the boat while you're going out there, get ready. It was, it was really intense, but it was really, it was an amazing experience. It sounds like, it sounds like so much fun. Like I can feel the adrenaline in your voice talking about it. It was, it was, and I was with Ryder, who was also a Salt Life team member, and he's just hilarious, and it, we, it was kind of our both time, like, or first time fly fishing, and we were like, what are we doing? <laughs> he was a lot better than me, but we made it work. Oh, man, it sounds like a blast. I know Ryder's a lot of fun, so, so it, fun. it was probably a really good time. It was great. It was really great. What was the hook set like? when you hooked up to one, did you really have to like stick it to it to make sure your hook dug in or do they have relatively softer mouths? Uh, they kind of have softer mouths. So usually, you know, you want to set the hook quick, but with the fly, you want to let it like sit and sink a little bit. And then you want them to swim just a little bit. And then you start pulling like crazy. Like as soon as you get it, like you have to pull like crazy. And that's kind of what I wasn't used to because you know, when you're traditional fishing on a spin rod, you just reel really fast. This, you kind of have to like let them eat it and then pull the line like so fast. And I just couldn't like the first couple of times I just like, I would feel them eat it and I just couldn't pull it fast enough. So definitely a learning curve with that if you're used to just rod and reel fishing. But once you get it and you get the kind of like process of the fly fishing, then it's kind of easier. But at first it's like, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> so since you're talking about the little bit of difference in, you know, the spinning reel and whatnot, are there any other differences you notice? Like the way that you like casting's obviously different, but yeah. what were the different, the major differences? It's just so much lighter and it's kind of more dependent on the line versus like when you're fishing on a spinner, it's all about the lure. Or there's just like so many different lures that you can choose. But with fly fishing, it's dependent on like the heaviness of the line, um, how thick it is. And then the fly is just like kind of like the last thing to touch the water. So it's like the afterthought. But it just getting the technique down, it really is. It just takes practice because the way the captain was doing it, I was like, oh, that looks easy. I can do that. And then I got up there and I was like, wait, what am I doing with my hands again? <laughs> so it's just so much lighter. And I feel like we're just not used to fishing with really, really light line and really, really light reels. So it was, it was different. What was the biggest challenge of the fly rod for you? I think just getting like the movement and the technique down, like it's not a natural movement and you kind of have to like throw your shoulder back and it's like a full body movement and you want to make sure you're doing it fast enough to where you can get the fly right in the middle of the, the bust. Um, and if you time it wrong or if you have too much line out or if you don't have enough line out, you know, you're not going to make it into exactly where you want. So I think just like really feeling it out and getting the technique down for me was difficult. Like I'm just not used to that. So it took me a couple times for sure. I think you said it perfectly earlier when you said it's a dance. It's, it is a dance. That's so true. Yeah. It's like, it's just not a natural movement for us. So I feel like doing it a few times you practice and then you probably still won't get it. And then you do it a couple more times and, and you might get it. <laughs> I have so, so much what, respect for fly fishermen. Yeah. The patience, the craft and yes. just the finesse of it all is crazy. It's, it's incredible. Did you guys catch anything else or were, was that just your target species and that was it? That was target species and that was it. We were supposed to go for reds, but with the weather, we just ended up like going and having a couple hours just to the Albies. Um, we caught reds just right of reel, so that was amazing. But with fly fishing, just Albies, super cool. Do you have any tips or techniques for our listeners? Yes, I would say if you're going for your first time or even, you know, you're kind of a beginner, make sure you learn from somebody who has an amazing technique already because. I, the captain was incredible. He broke everything down for me, um, taught me the technique and even like in a high stress situation where he wanted me to get the little fly right in the middle and I, and I kept missing. He just kept his patience, kept his calm, was like, okay, take a step back. Let's practice it again. And then we'll go for it. So patience for sure. Don't get frustrated or, you know, 
a, a crazy like I did. Like I was like, why don't I get it? Just patience and learn from the best or at least somebody who knows how to do it. That's so good. Patience is definitely key. <laughs> Something I don't have, but <laughs> I was trying my best. <laughs> so speaking of a good captain, can you shout out the charter that you went on and the charter captain? Yes, Captain Hunter. He was incredible. Um, he's done a couple trips with us for Salt Life. He took us to get reds the day before, and we were spot on every time. Um, he took us fly fishing. He's just a great guide in North Carolina. He also guides a couple different places, but he was incredible. And he's Chase and Tails Charter, correct? Yes, Chase and Tails Charter. Awesome. Good. What was your favorite memory from the trip? Oh, this was such a good trip. Usually it's diving related, so like we're in the water a lot and you don't really get to talk to a lot of people when you're in the water and it's, it's a, you know, kind of a different vibe. This with fishing, especially like me who's not, you know, super big into fishing, it wasn't as high pressured, you're just kind of relaxing, you get to bond with people more on the boat. Um, I got to meet a ton of new team members. Caitlin was there. I had never met um, Ryder before, so that was amazing. Uh, Emmanuel from Miami was there. I had never met him before, so it was just cool to meet different members. Um, you know, we all kind of do different things, but in the similar kind of salty field, so it's just cool to meet like-minded people who love the same thing and love salt life, so it was a great trip. That's awesome. Yeah, the connections made are always the highlight of the trip. I know. And like we get to do the coolest things in the world with the coolest people. It's it's a win win. Oh, that's so great. So check out the YouTube video on the Salt Life channel. I believe the caption or title, I should say, is kayak fly fishing in Crystal Coast. Does that yes. sound right to you? Yep. OK, awesome. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Did you have the chance to shout out your social media so we can follow along on all your salty adventures? Oh, yes. Okay, so at Summer Sawaya, very creative, just my first and last name. <laughs> so, That's easy, though. I know, right? It's. It, it, I thought a couple times, like, maybe I should change it, but just keep things consistent. I've had that forever, so just the name. <laughs> awesome. And then do you have any upcoming trips for us to follow along with? Hopefully I'll be going to the Bahamas spearfishing. Um, Key West next week, weather permitting for Wahoo, we will see, but you know how the weather's been here. Absolutely horrific. So every time I get the call to go, it's like, never mind, we're not going winds blowing 25. So, um, Key West, Bahamas, and then just a few other trips, hopefully this year, shooting a bluefin and a couple other things I really want to do. Those are big things. Oh my goodness. Good. I can't wait to follow along. I know our listeners are going to do the same and we wish you the best of luck on all your upcoming trips. Thank you. Do you have anything planned this year? I don't have a whole lot planned at the moment other than we're fixing up our boat um, sometime this month because we had a little bit of problems with it and oh, then always. getting out to do some pompano fishing, hopefully. Yes, that's awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast and we're going to love listening to this episode. You've been awesome. Thanks for sharing all your tips and fun adventures from your trip with us. Thank you for having me. Awesome with the Salt Life team as well. And great to finally meet you, even though it's podcast face to face, but you're awesome. I have been admiring you for years. So great to finally meet you. Oh, thank you. I've been doing the same. So one day we'll have to get out and dive together in the near I know, future. No, seriously. I love it. Well, good luck and be safe. You too.